the Greeks had long excelled at creating incredible statuary. At Olympia, the holy sanctuary was dominated by the world's largest ivory statue to the god Zeus, the god of all gods. But long before this statue was made, another brand of superhero was also making Olympia famous, the Olympic champion. And Olympia would become the most enduring sports arena, not just across the Greek Empire, but for centuries afterwards across the world. Olympia was the only place in the Greek world where both gods and men were worshipped. In July every fourth year, from all corners of the Greek world, thousands made their way to Olympia to compete in and to watch the greatest spectacle on earth. The Olympic Games began as early as the 8th century BC with a 200-yard sprint. Held to mark a truce between two warring cities, it launched over a thousand years of games. As the games grew in importance, the sanctuary of Zeus was transformed into the world's first sporting city, with training centers, baths, guest houses, and a stadium which could hold 40,000 spectators. Beneath this arch would run the finest athletes from across the Greek world. The games would decide on just one victor, whose reward was honor in the name of the god Zeus. The earliest race was 200 meters long. Later came the 400, then the 5,000 meters, and then there was the pentathlon, running, jumping, wrestling, discus, and javelin. So many of the events of Olympia were versions of war. Men throwing spears, men throwing stones, men racing in hoplite armor and heavy military equipment. Competitors were gradually reduced to just a final pair who would fight it out in wrestling and boxing combat. But only the elite could afford to take part. To go to Olympia meant you had to train for 10 months and then train for one month at Olympia itself. That wasn't for ordinary Greeks, that was for the very wealthy. Olympia soon grew into a vast sports complex, its buildings designed specifically for each athletic discipline. As Olympia soared in importance, shrines and temples were built to glorify and honor Zeus. But at Olympia, champions were also honored with the first gymnasium and next door, a school for wrestlers and boxers. But there were other, more unusual events housed in specially designed buildings. A contest for trumpeters and heralds was held at one end of an echo colonnade, an elongated building which could echo each note seven times. There was the Hippodrome, where chariot and horse racing events took place. Each race began with the horses being released from an elaborate starting mechanism called an aphesis to ensure total fairness. The horses raced out into the Hippodrome nearly 800 meters long. An average lap was nearly a third of a mile. The Greek who won at the Olympic Games didn't get a medal, a precious metal. All he got was a ribbon around his head palm branch to wave around the stadium and an olive wreath to take home. But his real reward started when he got home. He was allowed his pick of the spectacular heiresses in the town. He'd get a meal, a good meal at public expense for the rest of his life. And over it all, the fame he would be smiled at and pointed at for the rest of his life. The winners were recorded on statues around Olympia. Their names were even used in the Greek calendar. They named their years after Olympic winners. For the Greeks, an event was dated, the year in which such and such won. The games continued for 1,200 years until the Christian emperor Theodosius, in 394 AD, abolished them as a pagan event. Now the Olympic flame has been rekindled 
and every four years, a torch is carried from Olympia to the modern site of the greatest show on earth.